This is brought to you by the Alumni Association of PISJS. Hey guys, so today we'll be talking about a little concept here which is uh, actually very just uh, it's just a one lecture thing it's a very small concept but it's very essential and we are going to talk about free fall what is free fall so the name is quite self explanatory if you are standing on a building here let's say do not do this at home or just don't love physics too much to jump off a building it's just let's say you just you just jump off this building now let's assume let's just assume that there is no air resistance we will talk about air resistance in our upcoming lectures uh, so let's just assume there is zero air resistance there is no air resistance so there is no opposing force there is nothing that is opposing you otherwise in your normal daily uh, situations there will be a pos an opposing force something that will be trying to stop you from falling but obviously the good things always fail in life so there will be this air resistance that would be stopping you but let's just suppose we don't have this air resistance the only thing that is happening is that you are falling through uh, this building now you are falling down this building and there's no one saving you the air resistance is not saving you here so in the cases where there there is no air resistance acting this is called free fall you are falling freely under only the action of gravitational acceleration under the action of gravity only so free fall is basically falling under the action of gravity so this is solely under the action of gravity so there is no air resistance the only thing that is acting is the gravitational acceleration downwards you might have heard uh, people saying it that uh, there is a constant value for gravitational acceleration so let me just tell you the gravitational acceleration is a constant value on the earth but it changes on uh, depending on the gravitational force it changes on different in different places at different heights it's not really constant everywhere in space it changes for example Mars would have its own gravitational acceleration I mean if you jump there the acceleration would be different Mercury would have its own gravitational acceleration so gravitational acceleration depends on uh, it changes from place to place from let's say on earth we assume though you will understand and it is still not true but we assume that on earth gravity is pulling a man downwards with an acceleration we call it gravitational acceleration or just a simply simply just a small g with a 9.81 meters per second square to two decimal places this is the gravitational acceleration on earth this is what you experience if you fall solely on under the action of gravity and if there is no air resistance you will be accelerating by 9.81 meters per second square that means that if you just fall off a cliff let's just make a cliff here the same color and if you just decide to jump off the cliff someday just don't uh, <coughs> anyway if you just decide to jump off the cliff someday so let's say this is one second and this is zero seconds so from the acceleration now we have the understanding of acceleration what it means so at time t is equal to zero your velocity 
would be zero seconds because you'll be standing here. But once you jump, and this is free fall, I'm talking about free fall, there is no zero air resistance. There is no air resistance, There's, it's, it's free fall. So in free fall, the excel acceleration of gravity is 9.81 meters per second square. So what will happen that every second, for example, after one second, your velocity will increase by a 9.81 meters per second because the acceleration tells us it's 9.81 meters per second. There is a positive sign here. So it's increasing with 9.81 meters per second. So the next second, your velocity would be 9.81 meters per second. At this point, your velocity would be, let's say this is two seconds. So after two seconds, your velocity would be, let's say this is V2, this, v, this would be 9.81 plus, again, plus a 9.81. So every second, your velocity would increase by 9.81. So you calculate this, it would be something like 19.62. meters per second so this is something that uh, you will have now for the third time if you fall for the third time you will again your speed will again increase for example let's say this this is the ground let's say this is the ground level and you fall at the third second so your speed at t is equal to 3 would simply be 19.62 plus a 9.8 again so this would be 2 and 4 and 1 and 18 and 9 and 1 and 2 29.42 you will fall with uh, at a velocity of 29.42 meters per second just before hitting your velocity would be 29.42 as in this is just the, the the instant when you will hit the right this right little thing just the right uh, millisecond before you will hit that is called your final speed above the ground and that would be sorry above the ground that would be 29.40 meters per second so this is acceleration of free fall that every second your speed will increase by a 9.8 one meters per second square. Now let's see how your the graph of your fall would be like. Let's let's just since we know uh, velocity time graph, let's just for fun, let's just make a velocity time graph. So this is your velocity axis and this is your acceleration. Sorry, this is your velocity and this is your time. So let's just say this is velocity in meters per second and this is time in seconds. So now we know that if this is zero, in the first second your velocity was 9.8 meters per second. Initially your velocity was zero. At the first second your velocity was 9.8 meters per second. In the second second, your velocity again increased by a 9.8 meter, 9.81 meters per second, which became 19.62 meters per second. The third second, this is the second point, somewhere here. Third second, the velocity increased by a 9.81 again, making it something like uh, I don't remember what it was, but it was something like three and. 8343 29.43 I guess yes 29.43 so just add 8.1 here I don't have a calculator right here with me so I'm just doing it mentally so this is your graph would look something like this if I just make a graph from here to here so it would 
B. Okay, no. I, I just have a lot of trouble making these graphs. It'd be something like this. A perfect straight line. That's great. So, this is your velocity time. This is you, your velocity time. H. Your velocity time. Graph. So, this is what happens to you. Now, if I want to find the acceleration, let's see, from a velocity time graph, you can simply find the acceleration by the gradient. So, let's see, um, I, I don't think you, you're able to see this color, not in the screen board at least, let's take white. So, m is equals to, let's take the first point which is 0 and 0, and the second point which is 1 and 9.81 or let's just say 3 and 29.43 so 3 and 29.43 let's just take the gradient which would be 29.43 minus 0 over 3 minus 0 this would become 29.43 divided by 3 and this would give you 9.81 meters per second square so if you take the gradient this will tell you that your acceleration is simply 9.81 meters per second square that we accept uh, ex expected so this is what happened whenever you see a person falling from somewhere or a coin being dropped or a ball being dropped from a cliff and the acceleration being told to you as 9.81 meters per second square this is one hint this is your first hint if this is told otherwise if they tell you that the air resistance is negligible or zero this means or zero this means that it will always fall with an acceleration of 9.81 meters per second and it is experiencing free fall okay it's experiencing free fall 